make noodles. I have uh, had known how to make noodles for years now. My mother taught me how to make noodles ever since I was really young. And her mother taught her and her grandmother. There's Pennsylvania Dutch in my family and they've passed this recipe down for years. And it's very, very simple. It's mainly just eggs and flour and salt, just three ingredients. And I think a lot of people get intimidated by homemade noodles. It's very, very simple. Once you start making it and you can get a feel for it, you know, how much flour you need. I don't really have a recipe. I mainly just add some flour. What determines how large a batch of noodles you have is how many eggs you use. So today I only need a small batch. Normally I use five eggs. Normally I only use three. Today I'm only gonna, yeah, today I'm only gonna do three because it's just a, a little bit of broth I have today. And um, so, but I thought I'd share it with you all and I'm sure some people would be very interested on how to make homemade noodles. Um, first, what I always do is just put some flour. I don't really, I'm using a half cup right now, but it really doesn't matter how much. I just start with like a cup or a little more, a cup and a half, close to two cups. If I have, if I was going to be making more noodles, I would probably use a good solid two cups. Then I just take the, I'll, if it's a measuring cup, I'll just make a, a bowl in the middle, pressing it back. And when I make the bowl, then I crack the eggs into the middle, and then I take a fork and, and uh, break the eggs and whip them up. Oh, and you want to add salt to the flour also before you get started with the eggs. So. Normally I add about a half a teaspoon. I've even not salted them in the past. I've forgotten about the salt and they still turned out just fine. You just have to salt the broth. So this part is the easy part, just getting it together. Well, actually, all of it's pretty easy. I'm incorporating the flour into the egg mixture. And when it gets to a certain point, I'm going to take the spatula out. take my hands and put it in the bowl. And you want to grab the flour and push it into the ball of eggs. Any loose flour, just pushing it in. It will start incorporating into it. Just want to keep kneading it. There's any now. This next part. This is one of my favorite gadgets. Got this at an antique store. It's a si it's a, a sifter, and it has the handle sways goes back and forth, and it sifts it in like that. So what I'm going to do is. Sell some flour. That like that. And 
there'll come a point where it won't stick to your hands. Uh -huh. I like the knead until I can't feel any sticky parts. I'm just incorporating all the dry little pieces into the middle. And if the flour that you have in the bottom, if you feel any sticky spots, you turn your the batch, the ball around, and just shove it into the loose flour. I like to knead a little bit, really knead that flour in. I could be doing it out here. In fact, I think I will. better. The stiffer they are, the stiffer the, the dough ball is, the better it rolls out. If it's too moist, it'll just get really gummy and it won't roll out very nice. see this. Okay, now it's ready. I'm going to put it back in the bowl. I'm going to set up my noodle, uh, noodle cutter. back. This is my noodle uh, cutter. It rules it out for me. I always start on the thickest level and I rule it out and I keep going higher until I get it to the thickness that I like it. And then I have um, angel hair cutter and a fat cutter up here for fat noodles. And I think I'm going to do uh, fat noodles today. So I'm going to show you how you do it. Let me put some flour down. Already broke off a piece. This is, I think I'll just do a little bit smaller. That's a good size, like that. And put it in there. I like to go like that a few times just to make sure it has enough flour. Flatten it out a little bit. And we're at the first stage. I stretch it out so it will fit. And then you roll it out. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little bit sticky in between there. So I, I roll it into flour. Like that. Now, I'll skip up to three. Sometimes I like to go through twice just to make sure that it's getting incorporated. And then I think I'm going to go up to four. I put it in the flour each time in between rolling it to make sure that it's getting well floured so that there's no sticky spots. And then this one is ready. So what I like to do is lay it off to the side and let it um, rest for a few moments. So I'll lay that off to the side and then I'll grab another dough ball. I don't like to make too big of a dough ball. Sometimes it can, um, you can make really long strips and it can be a little bit harder to work with. So I've just come to like little, little ones. Now one thing about um, noodle dough is that some days, depending on how the humidity is, if it's raining outside or if it's a dry day, um, it could take more or less flour. You could always be rubbing in more, always be rubbing in more, and you've used the same amount of flour as before, 
same amount of eggs, but it seems to always need a little more flour on some days. So you just keep, that's when you just kind of go with the feel of the dough. Sometimes I have to knead more flour in it uh, before I have to start rolling it. I mean, need a lot of extra flour because it's just really that sticky. But this time it's not too bad. It's pretty stiff today. Sometimes you'll roll it out and it'll shrink back again. Today it's not doing that. As you roll it also, I like to have a lot of flour on it because that presses in the flour as you roll it. Now I found my noodle maker. Uh, I'm, I was, uh, I grew up around a, uh, a town called Steubenville, Ohio. And there was a Italian grocery store there. A wonderful grocery store had lots of good stuff in it but they sold noodle makers and I, I believe this is where I got my noodle maker I'm, I'm sure you can find it online if you're looking for a noodle maker maybe I'll look for the kind that I have and I'll put it in the description below so you guys can find one you can find them at yard sales you can also find, I've seen them at Goodwill So, I mean, it doesn't have to be bought brand new. I've seen them at yard sales. People will buy them and never use them. And then they decide it's just cluttering up their closet, their cupboards, and they'll put them in yard sales. So, if you feel like it's a little bit, like, crumbly, it, it'll still be fine. Just just work with it. It'll, it'll still taste just as good crumbly. You just got to uh, work with it a little bit more. Here it is. A little bit gummy again I don't know if you can tell but it looks a little yellowish so whenever I see that then I want to rub it in the flour put fresh flour on it there always be careful not to get your fingers caught between the rollers because it will hurt. <laughs> As I cut them, um, put them in the bowl and add flour to them to keep them from sticking to each other. So I'm going to put them right here. Oh, wrong one. Just go slowly. Now, sometimes the dough, see, this one's pretty stiff. That really came out nice. Not doughy at all. Sometimes the dough will want to be um, tricky and fold over in here. And just keep on rolling. It'll, it'll come out all right. It'll cut, and, and you won't even notice that it did that. It'll, it'll cut out, and it'll, it'll be... It'll be fine. I've done it lots of times where it, it folded over and got caught. It'll still cut. This is why I love this thing so much. Because every time... Every time I add more noodles, I just keep sifting it over. I love this thing. Oh. Right there. I had some water on my board. It's getting a little bit too long, so I like to cut it in half. And lay that on. 
See how it's ruffling over here? I just let it go on through. Doesn't hurt a single thing. It still cuts. As you do it more often, you'll get the feel of how sometimes one end will start quicker than the other. I just kind of hold on to the one that's going faster and let the other one catch up. And you'll just get the feel of it. The stiffer they are, the easier it starts to. It'll, it'll grab onto it. That's what I've noticed. The stiffer your dough, the softer the dough, it takes a few moments to kind of put, you get, sometimes you have to push it in to get it started. But tonight, uh, today it's not really doing that. To making noodles it's very simple I know you all can do it um, after it's mainly about getting a feel for it um, this one was pretty easy today I just needed in lots of, of flour you just got to keep kneading until it won't incorporate any more flour once you get there then you've got your dough ready and roll it out you can let it rest sometimes let it sit and let the gluten work in it you don't have to do that but you can and that will make it even a little more stiffer and you just really just got to keep um, feeling it to see how much flour you need to keep adding to it even as you're um, rolling it out to cut you can get a feel for her if you need to add more flour to it as you're laying it out in between rolling it's just a really like I said just getting a feel for it it's very simple it's very easy and I know you all can do it I thought I would let you all see how I incorporate it. When you are adding your noodles to your broth, sometimes I have the meat already in it, most of the time I don't. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to let it come up to a full boil, especially when you're using uh, undried noodles. I keep trying to twirl it around in the flour to make sure they're well coated. I get, get it going really well. Now what I'll do is take a small handful and wait till it's really boiling. I'll just gently drop them in. And you always want to stir in between each handful so that they don't stick together and they can start cooking. I wait till it to come up again to a boil. You want to stir so that they don't stick together. Sometimes if you don't, well definitely if you don't stir them, they will stick together because these are fresh noodles right now. And even ones that have been dried and you get them out of the freezer. Now when they come straight, uh, when you're cooking with them from the freezer, you don't want to let them sit on the counter and thaw. You want to take them straight from the freezer, let your, have your broth already nice and hot, and then put them straight in frozen. That's the best way to do it. You don't want to let them thaw. Do not let them thaw. Okay. Now, I like to have extra flour on my noodles, and you might be able to see, or see but as they, uh, the flour drops in, it makes a broth. It doesn't get lumpy, it makes a nice smooth broth, um, um, makes a broth. I meant to say, it makes a gravy, sorry. <laughs> uh, makes a nice gravy, so I, I try to use the flour flour. Slow that down a little bit. I'll draw it in there. I'm going to take it off the heat for a moment. Stir it in. All my life I grew up cooking on a gas stove. I love gas. It 
took me a little while to get used to electric, but I, I've learned the little tricks. If something's cooking too fast, you just take it off the heat. And then as the burner turns, it cools down a little bit, then you gotta put it, put it back on again. There it is. You just gotta let them simmer for a little while. I turned it down so that they're simmering a little slower. And now they'll be, they'll just cook in a matter of a couple moments. And this time, they're ready to eat. Oh.